Welcome back to On Base Season 2, live in your Bleacher Report app. And today, i got a very special guest, Brandon Nimmo. Thanks, Thanks thank, for having me. Whiskey. Thank you for, uh, for, for coming on, brother. How you been? Yeah. Uh, I've been great. I've been great. Just uh, getting the season started, like yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, we... We're off to a, a rough start there in the beginning. And That's all right. It's we'll, been it's been better now. We'll we'll get to that. We'll yeah. get to that. We I want to ask about that. Okay. But first, I want to talk about your position change. You were center fielder. Yes. Yeah, I was a center fielder. And now you're playing left. Now I'm playing left. So can you kind of take me like what's the difference? Because I've never played left. I yeah. played center. Okay. I played right, but I've never played left. Yep. And I've talked to a lot of outfielders, and everybody says left is really the hardest yeah. outfield position. Okay. So tell me about that. I appreciate Cause, that. Because you play both. I appreciate that. Yeah, so I've been fortunate to play all three in, in the big leagues so far. And, uh, you know, I would say the biggest difference in, in the corners uh, and, you know, left field especially versus center is you don't have as much time to, like, regain ground. Okay. So um, you're usually catching the ball in the first, like, in you know, the first two, three steps. Yeah, like, okay. That makes um, sense. Which, in center field, don't get me wrong, you do that as well, um, but there usually is a little bit more time to make up for it if yeah. the ball yeah. kind of tails on you a little it's, bit. It, or, but it doesn't do it as much. No, it doesn't. The, it's much more true. And in there's center. so many more left or uh, right-handed yes. hitters. Yeah, so you got the snap hook coming all the yeah, time over there. That's and hard. And that's if you get offline at all, yeah, if you take I, I, the bad yeah. route, you're done. Yeah. And so that, that seems to be the biggest difference in left field is like, um, just making sure you get that, like that right read right at the mm -hmm. beginning, uh, and that it's, you know, the right first three steps to the ball. Um, but, uh, the biggest thing is just trying to remember those, those cues in your head of like, okay, if I see, you know, if I see this guy like come over the top of the wall, yeah. I got to break in because, yeah. you know, that first instinct is to go back one step or whatever. And, you you have to totally like get rid of that and be like if I see if I see him come over it, I've got to go in because this ball is going to come down hard. Um, and then you know one of the things that people always forget with uh, left-handed hitters going that way is if they hit a foul ball, that it's always going to come back to you. Uh, so so those little tricks. And stuff. So just yeah. like just kind of uh, getting all those little like those little cues in your head that you don't have to think about in center field. Yeah, center field, yeah. you just go see ball, hit, get ball, you know, yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lot more simple, um, but you just have more ground to cover in, in left field. It's, there's some, some nuances that you have to, <laughs> that, that you, you have learn. to remember, but just like everything else. Yeah, man. exactly. But I mean, you know, it's nothing like your position change yeah, that, that's to shortstop. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. nothing like that. I mean, I, I hear the similarities though. Like yeah. A lot of nuances and stuff that, yeah. uh, that you got to get used to. And it's, yes. it's, it's tough. Bro. It is. It's it tough. is. How's you know, it playing with Bader and center fielder? It's center been fielder. it's been awesome. He's it's, he's really good. He's there. really good, really good center fielder. Um, he's already made some some spectacular catches. Um, we work we work really well out there, and he's yeah. really passionate about you know being a, a great defender. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he wants to be prepared for it. Um, he's always staying in communication with us. Um, and you know, with me and Marte and, uh, and Bader, you kind of have three center fielders yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. And so we're able to, we're able to cover some ground and, um, we're really working r well together right now. Nice. Um, nice. so I've, en I've enjoyed having him and he brings a great energy. Um, and he is just, he is such a character. Good. I, yeah. So <laughs> I, good. I love, I love being around him. And, he seems uh, like he, he's enjoying he it. He brings too. it. He brings the energy. All right. So I got a game called on base off base. Okay. All right, so whether you're in or you're out. Okay. I got a couple a couple things for you. Okay. New York style pizza is the best pizza. Are you on base or off base? I, I'm on I'm on base with that because I I like to see I'm not even from the East Coast and I like to fold my slice. Oh, uh, you like fold? Yeah. Okay. So I, I like the thin uh crust kinda and that you kinda just can fold it right over yeah. and it just makes it more efficient for me. What I appreciate about the, the New York style pizza is when you fold it. You know, you got this big, huge piece. Yes. You fold it, yeah, and then the grease just gets right yeah. in the middle. It's like a little grease, <laughs> yes. grease uh, canyon right there. In the yeah, middle. exactly. It. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, so you get a nice bite of grease yes, every, single, every, time. every I, single time. I, I know. I love it too. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. Okay. The next one is, you should plan your honeymoon the same weekend as a teammate. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I. 
I'm off base on that okay, one. Okay, tell us just, about that. Just because. So, so you, you tell us about that. You got married. Yes. The same weekend. Yeah. As I, Darno. Yes, as Darno. And we and we met each other. Uh, so we didn't even plan it at all. It, it was just happened. It just happened. And we ended we ended up seeing each other. Uh, and I think what happened is me and Darno ended up spending about like three hours out in the sea, just like <laughs> snorkeling with sea turtles and oh, whatnot. You're, you're and it's our honeymoon and, and, uh, and, you know, our wives are back there and they appreciated the downtime, but I think we had to separate ourselves from oh, each other really? because we were like, all right, it's, it's our honeymoon. We got to We got yeah, <laughs> yeah. to give a lot of but attention you, you to the girls. Out there, though, yeah. You, you want to hang out and chill. It was unbelievable. Exactly. I, I mean, it's hard to tear myself away, especially <laughs> Darno, man. Yeah. I love that guy. Like he's, he's awesome. He's so, he's, awesome. he's such a beautiful human being. What, and what, uh, what animals did you get to see when you were snorkeling? We were, well, I literally had a sea turtle. Like we had a moment. Like oh, I, like he, uh, yes, dude. Like he, That's huge, right? it was, That's yeah, he was huge. huge. And he, and he came up. And we were kind of chilling by these uh, rocks, which probably wasn't a great uh, idea at the time, thinking about it. But we were kind of chilling by these rocks, and all these animals uh, were coming in, all these uh, little fish. And then these these few sea turtles come out of nowhere. And this one, like, turns around and comes, like, right to me. I'm telling you, when he's, like, where my hand was. Uh, and he just stares at me right, right in the eyes. And I just like had this moment with this mm. sea turtle and he was, I, he was probably thinking, what the heck are you? Yeah. But I was like, oh my gosh, this guy, like he's actually acknowledging me. And, <laughs> oh my and, we, and we had a moment and, uh, and it was, it was pretty special. And then he swam off. Um, and I'm, I'm probably not supposed to say this, but I actually did get to, uh, place my hand on on the shell like they, so are you, do you get you're not trouble? supposed to touch them you're, oh, you're, you're wow. not you're not supposed to touch them at all but oh. i did get i did get to place my hand on it and then they he swam away so he like came up like had, had a moment like let me like touch his shell and then just and then went off nice so and uh, so we saw that. we saw the sea turtles we saw some uh some different colored tropical fish and i probably can't uh name all of them no sharks thank goodness okay. no so you've been scared of sharks uh, yeah i when you see a shark so i have in turks and caicos i i did see one while i was snorkeling and that, was scary. that yeah my I, my heart's never beat that fast no, but I'm not on yeah but we were we were <laughs> we were enjoying it and uh we had to tear ourselves away from each other. It was All so right. funny. It well, was shout so out to funny. your wives. Yeah, that's what you that you guys e- exactly. You have some good wives. Exactly, one thousand percent. We're we're very very well supported. <laughs> All right, so last one. You should run to first base when you get walked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you I'm know. on base for okay, that. Tell me about that. I mean, so why what why do you run to first base when you need? So it it all started when I was young, and I you know we were probably nine ten years old. And uh, my dad was one of our coaches, um, and a couple, couple other of the dads, and they just they always taught us that in in when you're that young on the fourth on the fourth ball, you never know if the catcher is going to catch it or not. So okay. I was fast enough at that time where if I sprint down to first base, I could take second base if it got to the backstop, mm, right? You okay. know. Okay. So they would just tell us like. Just sprint down to first base, and then and then you'll and then maybe you can take second base if they're like lollygagging it back. So we did that a few times, and honestly, it just like once I started doing it and making a habit of it, it never went away. And then when I got into pro ball, I honestly was just so excited to like win the at bat mm. that I would just like I'd throw it and I'd just sprint down there and I'd be like ready to go like for the next thing. And, and so for me, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like, uh, you know, like me showing, like, I, I'm always in a dog fight. I, that's the way that I look at, at, at an at bat. Like it's, it's always a dog fight, mono e mono. And like, if I walked, I won that at bat. Uh-huh. Um, and, and so I kind of just toss it over and I sprint down and like, it just, it's always been that way. Like, uh, almost like an excitement, almost like, um, you know, like a, Hey, I won. I won that at bat. And then, and then I sprint down. Um, so it, it started with, you know, just kind of like the fundamentals of baseball, of like play hard, respect the game and see if you can take the extra bag. And then it turned into when I got into pro ball, just, it, it stayed that way where, you know, I'm, I'm grinding and I'm trying to win this at bat. And when I walk, okay, boom, getting, getting down to first base. Yeah. I've toned it down a little bit yeah, since I got into the, it's it's, not a yeah. Now, I remember I, because we came up, I, I, we played against each other yes. in the minor leagues. Yes. Yeah. And so I remember you walking a couple times. 
And and I remember you walking a couple of times, and I'm and you sprinted to first. I'm like, this dude's weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Right, you know. Yep. And so exactly, but now it makes sense. It was just in, kind of ingrained in you. So yeah, exactly. Kind of is what it is. Yep. Yeah. So before we get into a couple other things, I got I got a a question for you. Yeah. Uh, have you ever really been like starstruck by seeing anybody? Starstruck by seeing anybody. Like, you know what I'm saying? You saw somebody you just loved, adored, whatever yeah. it is. You know, I think uh, I think when we had when we had Shakira come come Shakira, to the Shakira, yeah, okay. That was that was pretty cool. Because think, you know, I grew up, you know, and when we, when we grew up, she was, you know, yeah, she was pop. She was the deal. She was pop. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it was, it was cool. Like when she came to City Field and she came down, she came down to the cages and whatnot. Oh, and, she said, "Hey," and she said, "Hey." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you sing any songs to her? No, no shot. I, <laughs> you don't want to hear my voice. <laughs> All right, what's your favorite song by Shakira? Uh, I mean, the hips don't lie, the man. Yeah, don't lie. like okay. that. You yeah. know, can't can't yeah. go wrong with that. You know, it's it was it was really just really really cool because also she looked exactly like i like i remember oh, yeah. it's like you don't like age, age at yeah. all what yeah. what are you doing you know like you know it's like j-lo you know where, yeah, where you're like age, don't, don't age, what are you yeah. what are you doing how are, how are you still look this, i don't this know good? So, I, I don't know but they're yeah. doing a great job with yeah it. exactly so i think when when i saw shakira that was that was pretty cool um and took a picture with her uh and she was really nice and so that was also really nice. cool okay. is when you meet you know when you, you meet, meet someone, someone that's like yeah. Uh, you know that they, you know, they, I don't know. She has so many millions of followers, and she's like worldwide sensation. You know, and they're like down to earth and nice. Yeah. Um, that, you that was a pretty, it. Yeah, you, you appreciate, appreciate it. Like it was that. a good, yeah, it was yeah. a good experience. All right, so I want to get to where we started with uh, when we started the show. Yeah, and you guys started off shaky. Yeah, one in five, I think. Yeah, one in five, something like that. Yeah. Whatever. And now you guys have been playing a lot better baseball. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think uh, the difference? is or has been yeah. from the first couple games to yeah now. yeah i think um you know unfortunately part of it's just baseball mm-hmm. and you know that for I sure mean, it's um the fact that you can you can prepare the same exact way uh each and every day and and get completely different results mm-hmm. um is just something that you have to come to terms with in baseball um you try and trust the process and you try and trust the work that you're putting in. And we, we do have a, a lot of veterans. We don't, we don't have, we didn't make like that huge splash, you know, like, uh, like Verlander and Scherzer that we did in the past, um, or like you guys did with Otani, um, you know, th- this year, but you know, we, we do have a lot of veteran guys who have had success. And so, you do have a process that you know has worked in the past uh-huh. and you can't just like completely abandon that just because of, you know, five or six games start. It's always harder in the right. beginning yeah. because you don't have a track record of that season to like pull on where uh-huh. you're like, Oh yeah, but we won, we won seven games in a right. row, yeah, you know, back in, point. in this yeah. time. Um, and so when it's a new team and when it's new guys, it is always a little bit tougher in the beginning to uh, kind of be able to tell everyone it's going to be fine. Right, you know, like right, it's right. baseball. So to that, to that, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Being in New York. Yes. And that happened as well. Yes. It like, always you know, gets magnified. Yeah. It, I mean, and you don't want to say that they're overreacting. But kind of, you well, know, you know, you know, but the, after five games, it, you know, we got 160. You know, you know? New, New York is and and you know, it is a, it is very much a what can you do for me now mm-hmm. uh, kind mm-hmm. of town. And you understand that going into it. And, you know, there are a lot of expectations that go with New York. It's a huge, you know, obviously one of the bar- biggest markets in the world. And so they want they want successful teams. Um, but they're always going to, you know, if you're not playing well for, you know, for five, five, six games, yeah, they're, they're always going to say, you know, something has to change. Right. Um, and we, and we agree, you know, we agree, Hey, we're not, we're not trying to lose these games. We agree that it's not, you know, the offense isn't producing the way it should all, all of those things. Um, but the hardest part is finding the solution to those things. Yeah. Not, so what, what, what are the things you do? Cause uh, we have, give me some, I know when I was in Boston, yeah. right. And then e- even being, a Dodger, you yeah. know, there's a responsibility to, to winning. And yeah. It's like you don't want to push people out because you're not saying I'm not paying attention right. to y'all, right? But also, like, you do kind of have to, yeah, 
not listen yeah, to it. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, and so one hundred percent. You, I acknowledge that you know, hey, we're not playing the way that that right. we that we're supposed to, but you know, I'm not gonna let the way that the outside perception of this, I'm not going to let that dictate how I'm going about, right. you know, my mindset right. or my business. Um, and, and, and I think you're completely right on that. Like you, in order to play in those, in those markets, you, like you said, in Boston, in LA, in New York, you have to have thick skin and you mm-hmm. have to be able to, you know, have a lot of confidence in yourself. Yeah. And so what I was hearing from a bunch of the guys and what I was, uh, trying to say in my individual conversations with the guys um, and we didn't have like one big team meeting where we were like, Hey, we, we got to get it together or else. Mm-hmm. But it was just, um, it was just little meetings around the clubhouse of winning at the end of the day is the most important thing. Right. So whenever you get to the plate or you get the ball in, in your hand, whatever you feel like is the best decision in order for the team to win that day, whether sometimes it is walking a guy in uh-huh. a situation or sometimes it is, and that doesn't look good on your, on your stats, right. you know, cause it's another, it's another walk to yours, but to face the guy that's not doing as well behind him or in the batter situation to lay down a sacrifice bun. Uh-huh. If maybe you're not feeling that great with this matchup or whatever, and you just want to move the guys over and give it a better shot for second and third, rather than hitting into a double play, right. you know, like some of those things. And, and that, that was the conversation that we were having is that, at the end of the day, it's all about winning. Right. And if we if we win, this is going to be a lot more fun. Right. Right. Yeah. So Especially and then yeah. and then you're not going to care that like you move that guy yeah. over and you know it knocked your own base percentage yeah. down or whatever. Right. It's putting that team perspective on things. It always comes full circle too. Like you know yeah. when you do that when you play the game the right way. Yeah. The game kind of rewards. I you, I always you see know? that, and it's, it's you know if people there might be evidence out there that's like I, that, no you know the analytics or whatever might yeah, say yeah, like yeah. no that's not. But that's the way it feels. It does. And when we, when we play the game, that's the way it feels. Like 1, when you sacrifice or you – or even sometimes when you're trying to just get the runner over yep. and, you're pull, and you end up getting a base hit yep. or something, like you know, mm-hmm. and you're like, I wasn't even trying to yep. do that. Yep. And I think it was just, again, like doubling down on that, okay. on just saying um, this is what it's all about and it's going to be fine. It's baseball. Right. Like – but here's the most important thing. And so we focus on that each and every day. We pull for each one of those guys. We want we want to be on the front step, like cheering our guys on uh-huh. and, and like pushing them, pushing them in the right direction. Um, and we felt like if we kept doing that, that things would turn around. And then we ended up going on the road and kind of building a little bit of steam. And, um, you know, it kind of culminated in doing well against Atlanta and scoring those 16 runs um, in the last game. But – it's really just been like trusting the process and understanding that, yeah, it's six games into it, seven games into it. It's not time to panic, like positive affirmations to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously trying to work on if anything went wrong, like, Hey, let's fix that. But you know, if it's just waiting for the bats to come around or something like that, you also have to understand that, you know, you've played in the Northeast in, in April and it's, it's, yeah, it's cold. It's different. You know, it's oh, different yeah. than when you go down to Atlanta or you even come out here to yeah. LA, mm-hmm. you know, and you get, you get more similar weather. Um, and you know, the ball flies a little bit better yeah. and is a little more consistent, you know? And so, uh, offense has always been tended to be down a little bit in, in April in the just Northeast. In yeah. yeah. And so you kind of just, you know, you speak those words, uh, into, into people's minds and like, get that confidence brewing of like, okay, it's fine. Like, you know, like, well, and if you can change that perspective, um, because it's all about perspective in, in our, in our line of work. I mean, you can look at the same situation. And if you were to look at a line out, uh, at 105, um, and, you know, and you said, oh, it's not a base hit, so it's not good. Mm-hmm. But if you looked at it from the perspective of, I did exactly what I was supposed to do there. And so that's, that's a successful success, at bat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you look at that in two different ways, one is going to put you in a more negative mindset yeah. for more often, and then the other is going to put you in a more positive mindset for, let's say, half. You know, because yeah. we're going to get out if we're a if lot. if I'm you, <laughs> I'm still and I'm a Hall of Famer. Like I'm still going to get out. <laughs> you know, seven out of ten times. But if I look at it and two more of those every like every ten at bats is a hard hit ball. Okay, now five out of ten times, That's and then say you get a walk or you know two walks on top of that. Now six or seven yeah. out of those ten times, I'm feeling good about you know Which what we're doing. Keeps keeps 
and that builds. Accumulating, yes. accumulating. So hearing all this is like, would you consider yourself as uh the captain of the, of the Mets. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I figured that one I mean, might come you up. Know, would you... you know, it's it's been talked about, and uh, I just don't. I and and you could speak on this too. I'd be interested to hear your 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 take on it. But I think captains are like they're all always designated on a team by like who who the guys like rally around, who the guys uh-huh. come to. Like you don't need a C on your chest in order to be the captain of a team. Right. right? Like right. it's always it's a great public perception of like here's what we want our ideal guys to look like, you know, uh-huh. as for the young guys coming up and whatnot. Like when they see Salvador Perez with that C, you know, that's, on, yeah. on his like I think that's great because the Royals are saying this is what this is what we like. This is uh-huh. what we want you guys to to play like. Um and, you know, I, I think that's amazing, but I also think that you're going to have guys uh, that rally to certain individuals on right. a team and they come to guys for help and experience and, you know, um, trying to figure things out as, as they're, they're navigating through the big leagues. Fortunately for us, I think we have more, more than one of right. those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also do it in different ways. Right. So. I can sit here and acknowledge that I think Pete and Lindor and myself are are leaders on, mm-hmm. on the on the team, and I think we have even more than that. But let's just say that's that's the face of it. Okay, Pete is much more vocal, yeah. and he's much more of like that, like bulldog, like want to be in the dugout. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's and and just Pete. see, you know, and he like. He wants to do it, and he want he wants the big moments, and and that's what that's one some of the things that you want out of out of a leader. Uh-huh. Lindor also very vocal, but also very even keel. Right, man. He 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 never wavers. Whether uh-huh. he, you wouldn't you couldn't tell that's if true. he's hitting one hundred, you couldn't tell if he's hitting five hundred. Like he never wavers, and he's always the same guy, and he's always working hard, and he's always looking for something to be better at. And then myself, I tried to just lead by example. Okay. So yeah. I will pull guys off when they, you know, when they want my advice or when they come and they ask me questions and, and I will give my input, uh, one-on-one, but I'm not going to, uh, rah-rah as much. Right. And that's yeah, just yeah. me. That's no, just my that, personality. Yeah. And that's totally fine because I am totally okay with the rah-rah and everything. I just figured out that I don't play at my best that way. Really like I have to. My dad, when I was playing football, always told me to play with my hair on fire. And, like, uh, I tried okay. to do that in baseball, didn't and work. it didn't work. No, it didn't and work I had to baseball. just, like, pull it back, and I had to stay, like, in this one even keel spot and think the game through and make smart decisions and let the game come to me. Because if I try and go get the game, then it just doesn't work. It doesn't work out for me. Yeah, I, I think uh, I agree with all of that. But when I think of a captain, I, I think of those things, but also someone who is held is held accountable mm-hmm. or holds everyone accountable. Yep. yep. To the team. Mm-hmm. But also to the media. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. And I think that you know, I'm not sure how because we're on a completely different coast. So right. I'm not sure how. You are with the media. I'm sure you got to be great because everything's been awesome in your in your yeah. in your well, your field. That. But I would say that definitely plays a big part in that C being on the chest. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Especially someone in New York. Yeah. Like, when I think of Jeter, who had a C. Yes. All those things he had. Uh, Mariano. Yes. A Rod. Yep. Jorge Posada. Mm. Like he had other yes. guys that you're talking about, right? Yes. That led by yes. different ways. Yes. But when you think of him, like he was accountable. Oh, he yeah. never made, made excuses. Yes. He showed up to work every day. Yes. He did those things. And I think that's kind of what separates a leader yeah. from a captain. Yeah. And so if New York is saying, in my opinion, if New York is saying Brandon's he's the captain, he's the captain, yeah. he's the captain. And I don't know. No, no, yeah, yeah, you know right. It's not a yeah. big deal or anything, but I I would say that those things play a big part as well. You're exactly, and, you're exactly right. And being the captain. So, yeah. I don't know, bro. You're you're doing it right. Whatever well, you're doing, keep I, on doing. I appreciate keep on doing it. it. You'll eventually. It. And I think you're exactly right on that. I think, I think you're exactly right. Someone that can be accountable 
and like you said, in the pu- in the public uh, area of of the media and everything, that you're exactly right. Um, because I remember the the one that I remember from him was like, I'd I'd boo us too. Yeah, you know, exactly. When he when he was exactly. like, listen, this isn't acceptable, and we're and we're gonna we're gonna fix this. Yes. But like, yeah, I agree with you guys. Like I w- and he was very accountable on that. Yeah. And you're you're exactly right. And so I strive to be that. Um, you know, but I also. I've never been the one uh, that has said I need that on my chest, no. right? Yeah, 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 you know, no. and and so uh, I will take that responsibility, but I don't need you to, you know, if you want to, great. If we if we want if we decide that's that's what we need to do is put a C on there and make it public and all that stuff, whatever. But I will do those things, and I don't need I don't need your there you, you, go. Know, you yeah, know, exactly. So, but I love that I love exactly. that take on it. All right, so let's flip the script a little bit. Let's yeah. let's um, the Mets. Have a lot of nicknames. Okay. A lot of nicknames. Okay. And uh, obviously, Pete Alonzo as Polar Bear. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yep. Jeff McNeil as the, the flying squirrel. squirrel yeah. Flying squirrel. <laughs> Sean Manea. Man, is it Manaya or Manea? I don't want to disrespect his name. Yeah. Um. I. So that's a good question. I've always, I've said Manea. Manea. So, so we're gonna go. With we're Manea. gonna go with that. Our bad. And, and if, if it's if Sean. yeah, I'm sorry, Sean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so yeah. Manea. Baby giraffe, okay. <laughs> Eddie Diaz, sugar. Yes. Harrison Bader's tots. Yes. And you yourself are tater. Yeah. Okay. So where are, where do these names come from? Okay. So I'll start with mine. Okay. T- tater. Tater. All right. Middle name is Tate. My dad used oh. to call me Taterhead. Uh, oh my gosh. And so, so how did that make it to the team? So then when they when we got on there, it was just like. Basically, when when we did the nickname stuff for uh, those white jerseys, the players' weekend oh, okay, okay, and all yeah, that yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. I you know they they wouldn't let me do Taterhead, so they I don't know why I it was something do I don't know it was something with I don't know <laughs> they, they they some maybe copyright or I don't know maybe it was okay. Potato Head Mr. Oh, potato okay, Head okay, got a okay, copyright okay. on Tater I have no clue but uh, so we just shortened it to Tater. Um, the guys actually like around the clubhouse. I'm I'm pretty much Nims. Like they oh, just okay. they, so they not, shorten it down. Not, you're not. Tater I'm not anymore. Tater. I you well, know, tater I hate to. Me. Yes, I'm, I, I'll be me. Tater with yeah. you. I, I love it. And so, um, Sugar obviously, uh, Sugar Diaz. You know that that is what. I have called him ever since. Ever so his since name been, is just Sugar. Like that's I just call him Sugar. I don't even I don't even call Sug Sugar. I don't call I don't call him by his name. So, so ever like, does anybody call him? No, it's I, all Sugar. No, it's Sugar. That's so what this you. This is call, like a no. no this thing. is his name. Like it might as well be oh, his name wow. now. So when he introduced himself, does he say? I'm no, sugar? I don't think so. Okay. But I but to the teammates. It's sugar. That's okay. That's, All right. Yeah. What and about the What about Jeff? Yeah. The, the so Jeff swirl. Jeff yeah, got yeah. his. Uh, his is his is just a. He's got a remarkable, remarkably close looking face to a squirrel. So, <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie to you. He absolutely hates it, but he embraces it for the team. He he just he's he's like that yeah. So we somebody found out that at long that at long uh, Long Beach State. They called him Squirrel, oh, and because he and looks because like a of squirrel. his resilience, Golly, and it got to the team, dog, and we man. started and we started having having that be be the so team. So do y'all call him that? Yeah, we call him Squirrel, and he answers to it. He, he answers, even it. though he hates it. Even though he hates it, he's being a team what a player guy. on okay. that. And then uh, Pete for Polar Bear, yeah, yeah. you know that that one came about because. He just he kind of looked like a polar bear, you know. Like I mean, he's he he's he's kind of he's trimmed it up since, but like he used to be like you know have like hair like hair everywhere, and then uh, he's just a big burly guy that just you know see ball hit ball and I hit it out of the ballpark, you know, just kind of like one of those big burly guys, and we and so yeah, we called him polar bear, and we also had this thing back in I don't know it was like nineteen or something, and it was like the like the New York zoo animals or whatever, because it was like, and somebody even made a shirt on it. And I, I have one of the shirts, but it was like Conforto was like the silky elk. I don't know oh how they gosh. got that. Oh, uh, I was the golden retriever. 
Oh, and squirrel obviously was a squirrel. Yeah. Polar bear Pete, uh, and then J D Davis was the sun bear. <laughs> the it sun was, bear. Yeah. Oh. Have you ever seen one of those? No. Oh my god! I gotta look up a sun It bear. was hilarious. Uh, we gotta like, look up sun bears. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but we we had that, and so some of those names stuck with those guys, and uh, you know, obviously. That's awesome that yeah. you guys that they embraced it. Yeah. All right. So let's let's go back to let's go back to Brandon Nimmo right okay. now. Okay. You're from Wyoming. Mm-hmm. Yep. No disrespect. <laughs> Where is Wyoming? Where is Wyoming? Wyoming is. It's actually a great question. Get it a lot. Some people don't even think it's in the United States. Okay. So it's right uh, above Colorado, north of Colorado. So I actually grew up only two hours from Denver. So okay, okay. that was kind of so like do you the say home. I'm from Denver. So no, I don't say I'm, I'm from Denver. Denver. I say I'm from Wyoming. Okay. Uh, you know, cause you there, there's a little there. bit, there's a little bit of some beef there between Colorado oh, and Wyoming. God. Okay. All right. Especially, uh, Colorado state and Wyoming. So for Colorado state college is in Fort Collins, which is 45 minutes from the border. And then Laramie, Wyoming, which is also about 45 minutes from the border. Uh, that's where the two universities are. And then they oh, have so the border close. war. And there's, yeah, yeah, yeah so there's yeah, some yeah, rivalry yeah, there. Yeah. So uh, it is north of Colorado. It is west of Nebraska. Um, it is east of Utah. Uh, let's say northeast of Utah. Um, it is south of Montana. And it is just this big, massive square. Uh, and there's, I don't think there's any rhyme or reason for it. Back on the East Coast, they used to do state lines by like rivers and mm-hmm. whatnot. Okay. Yeah. In in the West, they just kind of put this square and it was like this. This is Wyoming. So so like, what's in Wyoming? Yeah. So it's a great question. Okay. Uh, least populated state in in the U.S. Okay. Uh, five hundred thousand people That's in the it. in the whole state of Wyoming, and it's mm. the fifth largest state land mass wise. Oh, so it means man. they're just not running into people a yeah. lot. The town that I grew up in was the largest largest town in, in Wyoming, and there's 60,000 people. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's more of a natural uh, kind of state. So um, if you like if you like national parks and state parks, that's the place for you. You got Yellowstone there. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows Yellowstone now yeah. from, from the, the show. Yeah. Um, you've got the Black Hills, which are in the northeast corner of it. Um, so right next to the border would be in South Dakota would be Mount Rushmore. You ever been uh, there? No, I've never been Yeah, there. okay. So it just out in the middle of nowhere, these faces just pop up on a mm-hmm. mountain, and you're like, holy, where, where, where did these come from? You know, But that's the northeast corner of Wyoming is, is over there. Um, we also have like this old volcano that used to, that used to, uh, be active and, and it's just, it's this massive tower. It's called devil's tower now. Mm. And it's just in the, in the middle of the state in Gillette, Wyoming off of there. Um, so it's more of like natural, uh, state parks, uh, Yellowstone, like where you can go hike, you can go Mm. snowmobile skiing's really big there. Um, rodeos really big. Yeah, speaking in, of rodeo, in Wyoming. Speaking of rodeo, <laughs> you yes wanted to to ride bulls I before. Did. Is I it did. before baseball? Before, or yeah, before baseball. Yeah. You wanted to ride bulls. I wanted to ride bulls. So so they that like Wyoming is really known for bull riding. Yeah, it's known for rodeo, and it, it because uh, cattle driving and like raising cattle is, is really was really big in Wyoming. It's a really big part of Wyoming's state history. So guys used to come together in the in the past to show off their cowboy skills. Mm. And that's how rodeo started. Is, that's how you and so you. what well I didn't necessarily grow up on a ranch. We okay. grew up on six acres in, in, in Wyoming and in Cheyenne. But my grandpa, he lived in Colorado. That's where my parents were from. Um southeastern a little town called La Junta, Colorado. And he had a ranch there. So we could go down there and we could be around cattle, be mm-hmm, around horses. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I just loved it. And so when I was growing up, my dad, he rodeoed um, when he was younger. And he would help volunteer for what is actually in Cheyenne is the largest outdoor rodeo in the world. Mm. Um, and our little town of 60,000 people would grow to like 250, 300,000 people for that, for that week. Um, they pay out the, the, some of the biggest prizes and they, they make it pretty, pretty, pretty difficult on all the Cowboys there. He would, he would, uh, volunteer for that and would help out. 
So I would get to go down and I would get to go be by those bulls in the pins and everything. I just, I loved it. I, I loved mm. everything about it. And so I had this like magazine that had all these, all the bulls in it and everything. And I had this bouncy ball at home, man. And I would, I would just imagine that I would say, I'm, I'm riding this bull. I'm riding, you know, red rocks or I'm, I'm riding bad to the bone, which uh-huh. bad to the you bone. The, the well, yeah. Right. Bad to the bone was actually the bull that killed Lane Frost. Um, I don't know if you've ever re- heard no, of or I'd, seen I'd, the movie absolutely. Eight Seconds. No. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, it was Tough Hedeman and uh, Lane Frost, and these were like huge names in bull riding. Well, my dad was actually on the arena floor when Lane Frost died. He mm. got got a horn in the back, broke his rib, it punctured his heart, and he was dead in like a and few. You wanted few to seconds. do that? I I wanted to do it. Yeah, I know. And so I I just I, there was something about it, it was some allure to it that that I that I loved and. So I finally got to go down to my grandpa's ranch. And when you're like seven years old, it's like the rite of passage that you've got to hop on, not a bull, but a calf at okay. that time. Like, uh-huh. in, like, let's say a 600, 700 pound calf. So you, you hop on their back, they get you going. And, uh, and I got on one, got bucked off and I got on the second one. And he bucked me off after a few seconds, threw me down, and then stepped on my ankle. And they got on video where I said, I don't want to do this uh, anymore. Uh. <laughs> and so once once that happened, they were like, all right, it's on video. Because my parents knew it wasn't if you get hurt, it's when you get oh, hurt really? with, 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 with rodeo. And so they were like, we want you to go do something other than, than rodeo. But I was so passionate about it that they had to actually get me on one and get me hurt a little bit so wow. that I would find finally be like no never mind i don't want to do this wow. and it, so, it ended up working so out then right. yeah so then you got bucked off stepped on the <laughs> ankle and they have like they have baseball and i mean I, do they, mm-hmm. they have baseball in wyoming like so they don't have enough they when have my enough when my brother field. started i had an older brother he was yeah. eight years older than me when my brother started uh and this is nothing against our program now we have a great program now but when he started you didn't know if if a if fly ball was hit to the outfield if it was going to get caught just a regular fly oh ball. wow like how, baseball how old, was, how old, how old he was, was he was eight years older than me so you know when i was 10 he was 18 and they uh, it, he and 18 year olds you didn't know if a fly ball you didn't get know caught. if 18 year olds were going to catch a fly ball that's how that's how that's wow. where the program was at when my brother came in. So my brother was, when he was, he was on varsity when he was like, what, 14, 15 years old or whatever. Um, and they brought in this coach, uh, Tag Lane, um, who had played um, and was coming back from, um, you know, and I don't, and I don't remember where he was coming back from, but he was starting to raise his kids. And he was like, I, we need to better this uh, program so that it's better for when my kids come through. Okay. And, um, and he took over and within, Within two years, they won. They won the state title, and then he started building on that to the point. By the time that I came through and finished, we had won like twelve out of fourteen of the state, state titles. Champions. So, oh, wow. so he really turned that program around to the point where uh, my brother was the first guy in like twelve years out of Cheyenne, Wyoming, uh, to get a D one scholarship oh, uh, wow. to, okay. to baseball. And when I watched my brother go through that and everything, you you kind of have like that sibling rivalry of like, well, yeah, but I kind of want to one up you, you know, like I want to like, I love my brother. I absolutely love it. I wouldn't be here without him. Um, but you know, when you're, when you're, when you're that, have that sibling rivalry, you're like, yeah, I'd kind of like to be a little bit better than him. So I was always striving for that. And so all they had in, in Wyoming was American Legion post six. Uh, there was no high school baseball, mm-hmm. um, and so that's we like would rec just, league or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's just a summer ball league that most guys will go play high school baseball, you know, for their thirty games, and then they'll go play their fifty games during right. the su- during right. the season or summer with their uh, summer ball team. I just I played all eighty games with with my summer ball team. Basically, okay. is okay. what happened. But no 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 sanctioned high school baseball. So. Everybody thinks that, like, when they heard, oh, there was no high school baseball in Wyoming, they were like, oh, he was out, like, you know, flinging this, like, ice uh, fishing pole. And they were like, oh, he's got good wrists, you know, like, maybe he could be a big league baseball player. And, you know, it's not it's not exactly how it worked out, but um, a lot of guys uh, did come and watch me where my dad had actually had a barn built 
um, and we put a batting cage inside of oh, it. Oh, okay. And so I did have a lot of people come and watch, you know, me in, in the batting cage when it's snowing and, and windy in, in Wyoming because it's Goodness like that gracious. for seven months out of the oh. year. Um, but that got, you, that got you drafted. Yeah, exactly. And you got drafted 13th, you were 13th pick of you have 2011. Of, uh, so we were the same, which I feel like is one of the best drafts it in was, history. It was, it was a fantastic draft. I feel like we had a really 2011. I, I would love to go through that and and see just we should, all, we should do that sometime. We should have that. Yeah. But so you went through, got drafted by the Mets, and then how was the minor leagues for you? Cool. So the minor leagues was was good. Uh, you and I met met up at the 2013 All Star Game. Yep, in right. in uh, I was playing for Savannah, and you were playing for Greenville. It was yep Greenville. Green- and I, right after the All Star Game. You I got, got promoted. Yeah, I got promoted. I know you yeah. were on the fast track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. That's why I remember meeting you because then. Um, I kept up with you, even though. Did I don't you know, really? But, yeah, I. When you got when you made your your debut, I was like, man, <laughs> I played with him in the All Star yeah, game. You know, yep, you know, you yeah. Just, you know, you just kind of root. I I love you know. that. I love. I appreciate that, buddy. I I remember meeting you uh, at, at the game, and and I remember just thinking how talented you were, and then. Uh, next year you were destroying all my buddies that were up in Double A. <laughs> yeah, Actually, no. that summer you were destroying them, and I was like, "Yeah, it ain't gonna be long before he's in the yeah, big no, leagues." But the same, the, same, the, you know? the minor leagues was a little bit different story for me. A, a little bit different. I had I had uh, some uh, maturing to do as yeah. far as my game came. Well, that I mean, you were playing coming from Wyoming, exactly. You know? So it's exactly. Completely so when when I got there, I had I had faced ninety. You know, uh, and 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 had been to the showcases and done well, but not on a everyday yeah, basis, basis yeah. where every guy coming out was you know blowing cheese and you know in GCL it's also a little scary because mm-hmm. they don't know where it's going. They, <laughs> they they one is at your head and yeah. one then one's on the corner yeah. and you're like I I don't know I don't I just yeah. it, can I stand in here and and be safe you know so. Uh, there was there was definitely some learning curves that had to happen for me that um, that took that took some time yeah. and uh, and I had some I had success along the way no no doubt um, I I did really well in the Sally League with where where we were at um, together yep um, and you know but I just remember the first experience was was GCL. Um, and nobody showing up to any of the games and it played, you played at 12 o'clock every day and you know, you had three hours of practice before that. (laughs) And I just remember being exhausted for the games when they would come. And I was like, I mean, now we got to play against, uh, you know, against these guys that are blowing 95 and whatnot. And so it took, it took some adjustment for me. Um, and in Brooklyn, I started off terrible in, in that next year. Um, I think I hit like 160 for the first month or something like that. And, uh, you know, everybody's yelling from, from the stands because it, it, it was in Brooklyn. So it's right next to, you know, city field, like, I don't know, 30, 30, 40 minutes away. And, you know, and you'd have the Mets fans like, why the hell did we draft yeah. you? Like, you know, you're, you're terrible. You know, I'm 19 years old and I'm still just trying to figure it out. Like I, you know, this is the first time I've been in the city. I've where well, we're staying at a place with bars on the windows, bars on the doors. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Forty five minute bus trip on a twelve passenger van with fifteen people in it. Yep. You know, to to the yeah. park and um, and just trying. You know, taking taking the subway sometimes and you know, no trees anywhere. And I'm just trying. I'm trying to figure all this out and you know and figure out pro ball at the same time. See, that's the and stuff it was that don't see. yeah, it was different. You know, and and uh, took me a little bit, but I finished that season out well started to f- figure a few things out did the salad league well and then I kind of had to figure out how I got an injury and I figured out I had to, a, it was a good learning experience of like how do you how do you manage playing with an injury uh you know and how do you how do you manage like is it pain or is it or is it injury and and, and you know can't what can you play through and what can you not and I think the minor leagues is really good for that it was something that I didn't have to deal with you know early on in uh-huh. you know high school or nothing right I mean but then in, in the big in and in, in the big leagues you have to learn how to play like that. So I think in the minor leagues that was a good lesson for me on okay, what's too much and what can I play through? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had to learn that. And then double A was was a bit of a, a struggle for me. I actually did really well in high A and kind of just cruised through half a year of that. 
but Double A was was a, a bit of a struggle. That's where they say the biggest the biggest jump is. I, and know, I don't know about a. you, but that's where I felt like I think you just kind of yeah, destroyed it. You did really yeah, well, yeah, like. Yeah, did, but yeah. for yeah, but for <laughs> me, it was a bit bit of a change because they were finally throwing those hammers for yeah. strikes. They were mm-hmm. finally throwing mm-hmm. the, the the changes mm-hmm. for in high A. I literally just had to wait for yeah. that four seam foul yeah. or the sinker, whatever. But just wait for it to come over the plate and just hit it. Yep. They couldn't throw everything else for a strike, you know, all all that often. And so in double A, that's where that really came into play. Where it was like, well, you know, our our I, our hitting coach actually, our roving instructor up until that point said, "What's the best way to hit a curveball?" Hit the fastball. fastball yeah, yeah, and 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 yeah. in double A, I was like, that don't that ain't gonna work anymore. They'll throw me three curveballs, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, for a strike. Yeah. And so that was good learning experience too, because it just taught me how to be able to hit the off speed pitches better, um, and how to kind of you know get off the fastball sometimes, you know, and and it, it happens. And, and now you've carried that all the way to the big yeah. leagues, and yeah. Now I know we got to let you go, brother. I know you got some things to nah, do. You got to get fun. to the uh, get to the stadium. But thank you for coming on here, man. And it's super dope to uh, to know that you met somebody at an All Star game yes. in the minor way leagues. Back you when. know, but way back when, because a lot of people that you came up with probably aren't playing the game yeah. anymore, right? Yeah. And no, just all the relationships that you develop with guys in the minor leagues yes. that you're in the hotels with, you don't really see them anymore. You're you know? you're exactly so, right. So that's uh, it's it's good to know that I I get to see somebody. Yes, one hundred percent. All right, man. We got the game today, and uh, good luck. Don't uh, don't 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 do too much. <laughs> yeah, same, you, same to you. If I if I hit a hard uh, <laughs> just hook, yeah. uh, line drive yeah. to left, make just take a step. Back. Okay, so, all right. My man. Oh man, <laughs> thank I you, love B. It. Thank you for having me on, and uh, catch you guys next time. Thank you.